Well, welcome, everyone. Um, I'm glad that you were able to make it this time, Kate, so we now have our, our full committee. I'm going to be here. <laughs> Excellent. Um, um, we need to announce that the meeting is being recorded. And what and meeting it is in the page. Oh, thank you. So it's August 22nd, 2019. And this is the Select Committee on Pesticide Reduction of the Northampton City Council. So um, we have on our agenda welcome and introductions. Um, do we want to go through that again? Uh, Kate wasn't here the last time. Wait, she announced that the meeting's being recorded. I did that. You did? Yeah, I did. I oh, I'm so sorry. That's okay. It's the right side of your computer. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe some coffee. <laughs> did you give up on the uh, Jim? Did you give up on the idea of uh, projecting the agenda? Yes, I okay. did. Great. That's fine. We don't. I, I don't think. I gave it a shot. We, we we have a new computer for the council office, and I don't know. I don't know how to look it up yet. Okay. Well, that's fine. So um, let's just go around, and uh, my name is Adele Franks, and uh, <clears throat> I, my background is as a public health physician, and I um, had a very strong interest in pesticides um, for a variety of reasons, and I actually gave a presentation to the Board of Health on this topic about mm, four to five years ago. So. I'm Cynthia Swopis, and I, um, I'm a member of the Board of Health. I teach at UMass Health Communication and Reflections on Health. And um, I'm taking the minutes. Thank you. And I'm Jim Nash of the Ward 3 City Councilor. I'm Elisa Klein, the Ward 7 City Councilor. I'm Kate Simmons, and I am an environmental chemist by training and have worked with pesticides in the past. Glad to have you. Thank you. <clears throat> Let us approve the minutes of the last meeting, uh, and then we will be uh, waiting for the mayor's arrival after that. Um, one thing I wanted to point out was that in the minutes we did state um, we have to move to approve them before we can discuss anything on them. Just saying so you know. <laughs> I'd like to make a, a motion to approve the minutes. Second. And now we do Any discussion. Dis oh, now we do the discussion. <laughs> it's just Thank parliamentary you. order. Well, it's very, very helpful. <laughs> Someday I'm going to learn all these things. Um, <clears throat> well, I wanted to point out that we, um, we did uh, make some preliminary assignments, and Kate was not here, but um, we did have a communication by email. And I, as I understand it, you have accepted what we what right. suggestion. <laughs> okay, so I just that's 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 the only thing I was uh, wanted to say about the minutes. Just a reminder: what's what was the acceptance for? Okay. Um, uh, Kate was going to cover uh, the effects of pesticide use. Uh, okay. So all that, and these things are all in the previous okay. minutes. So I don't think it needs to be repeated. But just for our purposes today, um, uh, Cynthia and I are going to explore policies and practices from other communities. Cynthia and Jim are going to uh, engage with the Northampton City Departments uh, to find out what is being done and what grant opportunities they may or may not be aware of. And Elisa is going to look into grants, uh, costs, and funding opportunities. Uh, and also is gathering a bunch of information on a wakelet so that we would all have <coughs> access to the same body of documents. There was one more thing, that's included, but I was going to check with the MMA, the Mass Municipal Association, to see if they um, manage information about different municipalities in the Commonwealth, whether or not they have taken steps around pesticide reduction, and if so, what they are. Would you like that? Is it's mentioned in the minutes that um, you would like to understand more about MMA stance and efforts? Um, do you want to add that though to your assignment? 
the to understand their stance. Yeah, to explore. What I thought that you wanted to find out where they stood on pesticides. And oh, well, I yeah. Um, okay, it's both of those things. Though it was also to see if they have any kind of database of that was my understanding anyway. But that it's fine. It doesn't again. It doesn't have to reflect exactly perfectly. Okay, so. I guess the question is, since we're in the process of approving the minutes, did you want to amend the minutes to include no. that in your assignment? Okay. No. It is uh, mentioned further on in the minutes. Oh. Okay. And any other discussion about the minutes? Okay. Move to approve. Oh, move to approve. And uh, I'm sorry. You have to um, close. We're closing the discussion. Thank you. <laughs> if there's no further discussion, we will close the discussion. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Any stand asides? Okay. The minutes are accepted. Well done. <laughs> Phew. Boy, that was that was just so challenging. Uh, okay, so. Um, uh, the next thing on our agenda is um, uh, the mayor's appearance, and he has uh, a few more minutes uh, before he's due. So I'm wondering if there's anything else we can start to talk about. Actually, nothing else is on the table. I do have two questions mm -hmm. in my head. I'm, not, I'm just addressing everybody in this, but uh, the first one is what precipitated the formation of this committee? Was there any singular event or? I'm just thinking technically can we actually if it's not on the agenda can we discuss it I mean it's not so much deliberation but you technically we're not supposed to talk about something that isn't on the agenda but according you, to open meeting law. however in the last meeting and in the minutes you reviewed the resolution that established this committee mm -hmm. um, so it seems to me that um, you could reiterate what's in the minutes already, which is basically if we were talking about the minutes now. <laughs> this open this parliamentary stuff is really I, like I think this is carrying it a, a little far. I mean, okay. this is already part of the public record that okay. this committee was established. Okay. It's in city council deliberations and okay. minutes, right? So a committee one of our committee members is just asking for a rehash because she wasn't involved with that. Okay. Actually, I have to confess, I believe I did read that resolution. Somebody sent it to me at one point. Uh -huh. So I have a second question. Okay. Oh, what's that? The goals. What are the goals of this committee? A goal. Well, let's see. That's I believe it's also in the resolution. <laughs> I think okay. so, too. <laughs> I guess I'll refresh. So welcome. Thank you. And um, and you and we would love to ch chat with you. And you don't really need to stand at the podium unless you want to. I would like to stand only because my back's bothering me. So <laughs> if that's okay, that's yeah. fine. Or you can stand, stand here. I'm you can stand around. anywhere yeah. you like. Okay. I just want you to be comfortable. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, do you know everyone on the on this committee? I Shall think I do. Um, I don't think we've met them formally. Right. Oh. I'm Kate Simmons. Hi, Kate. And nice I'm an see. environmental chemist, so that's why I'm. Wonderful. Yeah, and I know the two folks, and I obviously know from Public Health. Yep. Yes, exactly. And I know Adele, obviously. So, yeah. Hey. Yeah. Well, welcome. Thank you. So, we, uh, as you know well, we've been tasked with uh, providing a report in a relatively short time frame mm -hmm. on pesticide reduction recommendations for Northampton. Okay. And in order to do that, we're going to need to find out what pesticide use currently is like in Northampton, and so we wanted to talk with you. Municipal pesticide use, you mean? Municipal Yeah, exactly. Use. Yeah. That's correct. Okay. Well, thank you for that. Um, no, no problem. I just want to... Does that include school, school committee or school grounds? Um, uh, the challenge there is that the council doesn't have authority over the schools. 
that's one of the challenges. Um, and so um, I can figure that one out. Um, like the school, like the city council can't actually call a school employee before it can. So it explicitly says it in the charter, actually. You can call municipal employees or city officials, but you can't call school officials. So I have to think about that. One. However, we can set policy for the city if, I mean, we're not necessarily planning on doing yeah. that per se with yep. the outcome, but just in terms of setting policy for the city, it seems like that would ultimately cover something that has to do with the schools. That doesn't mean it can't be a discussion and whatever at, in the school committee, but I think um, if we were to create some overarching policy for the city, the schools would fall under that, but that could just be my interpretation. Yeah, I, I, I don't agree, because um, actually the school committee by law makes all policies for the schools and actually controls all school property. So that would be challenging, because um, then you could make a policy, city council could make a policy that, you know, we'll teach math this way, it should, math shall be taught this way in the schools. I mean, that would be the challenge there. But um, so, uh, um, but yeah, like everything, parking, anything having to do with the schools and it's all done controlled by the school committee so that would just be the one challenge there um, but I can I can look into that um, but so that would just be the one challenge for the school piece the city school piece um, but the schools could, could could the schools voluntarily decide could the school committee voluntarily decide that they would like to adhere to any uh, city council recommended policy they could and they could enact their own policy. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. They would have to enact their own policy. So, so, the school, so the school committee would have to talk to the administration, to their maintenance department, and they uh -huh. would have to make that decision. I don't, but the city council can't compel them to do that. And um, in, in our efforts to gather information, yeah. uh, and it's very important to us to gather information that could affect the children of our city, yeah. which means the schools, um, uh, what access would we have to people who work in the schools to determine what kind of pesticides are currently being used? Um, that's one I could definitely talk to Dr. Provost about, the superintendent. Okay. Um, also, full disclosure, I mean, not, not hidden information, I'm also the chair of the school committee, so I'm, I sort of straddle these two, uh, mm -hmm. uh, these two universes, and so that's certainly something I could talk to Dr. Provost about, and um, he may want, he may be willing to just do that um, voluntarily. So I can certainly talk to him about that. Okay. that and let him know about the committee and let him know about this. Um, that might be a segue into another piece of what I think we wanted to do with you here is ask you procedurally about how you are interested in us um, soliciting information from city employees, what the, what the process should be. Yeah. Um, so I would, um, I would, I would use the, uh, I would follow the sort of the same process that um, our your city services committee follows. Um, city services is a committee that um, looks at city services and how different departments are performing various city services, and they um, bring in city departments and talk to them about you know various issues and and. Sometimes it's issue specific, sometimes it's just generally wanting to know what's going on within the department. Um, and the way we typically schedule them is through the mayor's office. So the city services committee will contact us and say, we'd like to have the DPW director come in. Um, and we also ask that, um, and this is also, it's a requirement of the charter, we don't enforce it to the letter, but just um, not only invite them to come, but also what they're being asked to come speak about. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not, you know, the Socratic method, or it's not you're coming in and you're going to be sandbagged on, you know, something like that. So, like, the charter actually says that the council can call any city employee, but they have to provide questions in writing in advance of what they're going to ask. And again, I think it's just a protection that you're not going to bring in some employee and then embarrass them by asking them, you know, how many manhole covers did you install last year or something, you know, something like that. So, um, so that, I, that would be the way that I think would be the best would be um, 
to then to contact us and let us know what who what um, what department you like and where and you know what we typically do with the city services committee is we try to work out a schedule and you know based on their meetings and who's coming when um, that would be the, that would be my preference. Does that seem workable? Just to clarify, Mr. Mayor, that's uh, our committee can contact your exactly. Office. We don't have to go through city services. No, 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 no. I was just saying that using that same method. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, we'd like to have the DPW director come in and we'd like to know X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. um, and then she could bring whatever staff she needed to provide that information. Okay. Um, like, I would, you know, I would not want you call, I just would not want you contacting, you know, uh, a, sort of an underling at the DPW to come in. Um, mm -hmm. I would want to go through the director and then have the director um, bring in people that would have that information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it'd be good to know what kind of information you want. I mean, I think it's fairly clear what kind of information you want. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And the same with the planning department. Um, I mean, this isn't super complicated. I mean, we're basically talking about, um, I think, central services, the um, uh, planning and sustainability, uh, and DPW. I mean, that's it, really. Probably Board of Health because of the pesticide, uh, because of the spray. Sure. Yeah, Board of Health as well. Um, yeah. But just in terms of who's involved directly um, with any, who would be involved with any kind of maintenance that might involve you know, herbicides or pesticides. Mm -hmm. so, or who has MSDS sheets on file? What's that? It would be whoever has the MSDS sheets on file. Okay. Interesting. Somebody has those. The what sheets? MSDS. MSDS. Yeah. I, I forget off the top of my head what that stands for, but it's just a fact sheet of toxicity, um, all kinds of things about any chemicals that are used. Uh -huh. Okay. And I'm sure someone has a file of them somewhere. Okay. So this would be anything that's being applied under a license? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure we must. I mean, if, if there's anyone applying anything, they would have to have a license. And, um, and DPW had probably knows yeah. where a lot of them yeah. are stored. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, we'll, we'll check on that for sure. Yeah. So, um, getting a little more granular, do you would you want um, would you want us to just kind of talk about the department, and then it would be internal the decision of who would um, come and speak to us? Because I'm just thinking, like an example would be, um, would we say we'd like someone from the DPW or could we say you know specifically Rich Parcelletti or if we want to talk to someone who works on conservation issues yeah. we would you know say the planning department yep. um, and then it could be Wayne but maybe Sarah has more knowledge in terms of you know what's actually done in conservation areas so how do you want us to manage that piece of it? I think it would be um, I think if you provide the type of information you're seeking and you provide it to the department that it'll be incumbent upon them to bring in the right people. I mean, Rich um, certainly would be involved for one segment, um, but then there's a whole other segment of DPW uh, that is related to, um, you know, like the levies, for example, and um, some of our requirements under the Army Corps of Engineers for how we maintain the levies, um, which he wouldn't be part of. He's not part of any of that. Um, so that would be under a totally different division. So, um, so I think that would be um, the key. Uh, you know, Board of Health, hmm. the other thing I would say about Board of Health, I mean, the health department you may want to call in. Um, the health department does manage our mosquito uh, program. Um, so uh, not, that's not the Board of Health, it's the health department. Although they use a third party contractor, subcontractor who does um, our mosquito surveillance and our mosquito um, prevention issues. I don't believe that they're not using um, they're not they're not using herbicide. I mean, they are using the little um, bioorganic hockey pucks that they put around. Um, uh, but that's that's what that's. I don't think they're not doing any spraying of of. Um, of uh, it's not a pesticide per se. Not that I'm aware of. But obviously, people have differing interpretations of what's of what's pesticide, what's not. So, 
I guess that's ten. part of our job. What's that? That's part of our job yes. to figure out okay. what's being used and how toxic it is. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it, is, it, is it best, I'm asking everyone this, for these individual department heads to come to this forum? Or can we interview them on our own? I think at our last meeting we suggested that it would be uh, you and Jim that would interview everybody on the panel separately so that we didn't have to deal with open meeting law and um, all of the complications there and if there's no quorum then the whole thing gets canceled etc so if it's just the two of you that's not an issue I just wanted to clarify from the mayor's perspective yeah. so that's fine if that's how you prefer to do it mm -hmm. yeah I mean that's fine it's probably easier to schedule too possibly um, so yeah that wouldn't be an issue And in terms of timing, you know, we have a very a short um, time frame to produce this report, yeah. so I'm concerned about that. And so um, we will get right on this concept of trying to schedule through your office. But I'm a, I'm a little more concerned about mm -hmm. uh, how much time might it take to get a decision about the schools. And I should talk to you about it. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Because um, talk about it right away. It, it would be a um, to me that would be a huge deficit if we were not able to talk to the schools. Yeah. So big part of um, what I think we see as our mission is protecting children. I, I get that, but it's but you just have to understand that I, there's a structural you know, I, No, that, I was just wondering about the timing. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Correct well, me if I'm wrong, but it's just we're trying to put together an inventory of exactly which pesticides are used within the city, municipally and possibly school, right? Correct, because that would be a benchmark. If if our report is going to be focused on reducing the amount that we're using, then we need to know how much we're using. Okay. If we're not using any, there wouldn't be much reduction to happen, would there? You got to. Well, and, and to the point of uh, the school department, I think that the first thing we want to do is just get information. Mm -hmm. And um, that... Um, the, which, I th which I think is why I think that there won't be a problem with that. Right, and uh, so I, I, I you know, they're, whether they're, or not yeah. we're going to want to recommend that the school department do anything out of that, we don't know yet, but we, you know, and you're comfortable with us possibly getting that information? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I'm going to talk to the superintendent about it. I just, again, I think you would just have to be careful that you're couching your recommendations in a way that, you know, we recommend, we would recommend that the school department you know, do this because mm -hmm. um, you really can't mandate that the school department do anything. Yeah. Um, I, I'm just being blunt with you on that. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. That would be my opinion. Um, wanted to ask about certain commissions too. For instance, the Ag Commission, which I know is a state mandated commission, I believe. Um, if we want to talk to people who are members of the commission, does that make sense or would it make sense? Is there, a, I don't even know, is there a staff member who um, works with that commission? Yeah. Would that be preferable? Um, would we need to talk to you about inviting commission members or can we do that on our own? Yeah, I mean, I think the, um, I mean, the Ag Commission, I mean, they're not state created like the Board of Health, for example. They're not statutory, they don't have statutory authority like health I mean they are um, we did create them and they have uh, they're they're part of the planning and sustainability office they're staffed by planning and sustainability they're part of the that so Wayne is actually I think the staff person for them um, I don't know who the current chair is but I'm sure that the um, I'm sure that I know Rich Jasky was very interested in coming yeah. in and giving farmers perspective although you know the challenge is you're not actually man. Your charge has nothing to do with <coughs> private farmland, so um, so they may be worried that you're going to be banning pesticides throughout the whole city, which you can't actually do. So, I, but it would be good to hear their perspective. I think which, because there are city so owned. you know we had talked about um, first of all there were a number of people that applied to be on the commission that were not chosen by the this select yeah. committee that were not chosen by the city council president. Um, and we have already been in touch with a number of them and still have to be in touch with them to ask them to come and speak to us as, to bring their expertise yeah. to the so Rich Jasky is part of that yeah. and um, but then I was just wondering about other if there are other specific commission members that we 
want to invite if we can do that, if not through the mayor's office. Yeah, I think that's okay. Uh, the, the one thing I would just want to be careful of is not, um, is again the open meeting law issue because it, because really, um, are they speaking as private citizens or are they speaking on behalf of the Ag Commission? You know, I just, you just have to be careful there because actually, you know, one of you probably shouldn't go off and say, I am speaking on behalf of the pesticide committee, because you're not really, like the group has to agree on what you're saying publicly. So I would just be concerned that, um, you know, I think if you wanted, I just would not want you to, if you talk to three or four different people on the committee and then give it the imprimatur that this is coming from the commission, because that's really not coming. Um, you're just getting individual opinions from different people. It's not truly the, you know, the commission didn't meet, discuss it, and say, this is what we believe as a commission. So that would just be my one concern about that. Um, I don't have a problem with you inviting those individual members. I just it would have to be clear that they're not speaking to you as an Ag Commission member, and that they're not, that. They're not, in, <laughs> they're not empowered to speak on behalf of the Ag Commission. That would be the one. So when problem. we reach out to those kinds of people, we should just be clear to say that we're asking them to speak as a private citizen. You know, they may be informed by what they know from their participation on those yeah. commissions, but or, I mean, they're on the ad commission because they have expertise. They own farmland. They're active in farming. They, you know, whatever. That's the reason they're on it. So they would be a good representative group of people, you know, to represent the agricultural perspective. So. But if they decided they wanted to go on record as a commission, then that would be their prerogative. They could Certainly. put it on the, their yeah. agenda for a meeting. They could discuss it and make whatever recommendation but, they wanted. Yeah, the only, the only problem is, I just, again, I don't want to set it. I don't want to, I just want to be careful because if you don't want to have like sort of serial deliberations, like if you meet with a quorum of them separately and, mm. and get them to a point that then they're, you know, going to, come to a decision as a group, you just have to be careful about that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So that would be the only thing I wouldn't want to inadvertently put them in that situation. Because okay. um, that is the problem when you, because uh, you know, right. violating open meeting law doesn't have to be, you know, three of you having a meeting outside somewhere, but it could be, well, I talked to Jim and Jim supports this. Do you support it? And I talked to Adele and she supports it. Do you support it? So there actually is, there's that kind of a thing right. that can happen. Um, so again, I just would want this to be, I, I don't want to, I don't want to put it in, you in a situation where that might happen. Thank um, you for so, the reminder. Yeah. Like if you meet with them all separately and then, and then, um, mm. well, your colleague, Mr. Jasky was here and he said X or, you know, whatever it is. I'm not, I just need to have to be careful about that. Thank you. I'm just a, I'm sensitive to these things because there are people who often, um, if they don't agree with, if they don't agree with the substance of what a body is doing, they'll often go after the process. So I think it's always important to make sure the process is is very um, airtight in that way and can't be open to scrutiny or criticism. Mm -hmm. So. Um, but do you think that you so you do you think that like the chair of the ag Commission. Hmm. I mean, you could also you could also hold a joint meeting with the Act Commission and invite them all to come in and have a conversation with them together. I mean, that's the other possibility. Um, like, I don't know how many Act Committee members you want to have in. Well, I think we haven't decided that either. Okay, yeah. uh, but we do know that Rich Jasky had expressed interest, and so we definitely want yeah. he's on our list for sure. Yeah. So we'll have to yeah. determine whether okay. we want more than one person from the Act Commission. To give us feedback, and if so, then yeah. they need to decide if they want to do how they want to handle that. Yeah, and he and if and he may he or she may feel like they may want to raise it at an ag commission meeting and say, "I'm going to go testify. Is there other information you would like me to convey on behalf of the ag commission?" Mm -hmm. and if that happened at a meeting, then he could they you know he or she could actually do that. Okay. So, yeah. but. So does that sound all? Yeah, it forward? sounds uh, like we will be being in touch with your office to start scheduling yeah. meetings very soon. Yeah. And are there any other questions? I'd probably just contact Lynn. <coughs> you could just contact. I think that's what city services typically does. She's my chief of staff. Um, you know, you could just send an email to Marat, but 
Um, but Lynn typically is the one who handles that for city services and just coordinates with them, okay. sets up the schedule. We do the same thing for budget hearings when, when budget hearings are scheduled with departments. Um, so. That sounds good. Okay. And I will talk to the superintendent about the other information. I mean, clearly the information is public record. So it's not like you, um, it's public record. So uh, certainly information you could find, but, but um, in terms of other staff members from the school department, that would just be something I'd have to talk to the superintendent about, um, whether he be, would be comfortable about that. So. So it's public record, so somewhere on the city's website or we can find this information? Um, no, what I'm saying is that, I mean, technically at the end of the day, you could say, I would like a copy of any invoices for pesticide purchases, right? Wouldn't okay. that be a valid public record? And then we would have to, you know, give you, give that person information, uh, you know, about how long it will take us to provide it and search for it and discover it and, and prevent, provide it. So I, I was just saying in that context, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's public record. Right. So, um, so, but again, I, I'll, I'll talk to Dr. Provost. I'm sure that that would be something that they could provide, information they could provide. Is it the DPW or Central Services that actually oversees turf management and things like that in school grounds? Um, no, they're separate. They're um, completely separate? Yeah, so DPW manages um, city parks and city uh, grounds. And the school department has its own maintenance division, which manages school grounds. Um, and do they sit in the DPW? Or no, they're not part of the DPW they, at all. They no, use they, different equipment? Yep. I mean, how? Totally. It's they one have of those. All their own equipment. Yeah. Okay. It's the last. So all their purch purchasing is also done separately? There's not kind of a um, joint purchasing process that happens? I mean, there, a, a lot of purchasing happens through central services. Um, but it's obviously paid for out of the school budget versus the city budget. Um, and I will say to you, this is totally enough, has nothing to do with your work, but I mean, that's one of the, you know, we've combined um, human resources for city and schools, we've combined IT for city and schools, and you know, something else that's in the future potentially would be combining um, maintenance uh, of city and schools. Um, again, it can't be imposed on the schools. It, it, uh, state law requires that it, the school committee has to agree with. Um, so it's, but it's a longer conversation. Um, but anyway, that, but that is, they are separate. Um, so an athletic know. field, if it's on school grounds, it would be managed by the school personnel. That is correct. And if it's on city land, non-school land, um, yeah. it would be managed by DPW, is that correct? That's correct, yeah. Yeah, so you know Florence Fields and Arcanum and you know all the traditional uh, city-owned parks that are managed by the Parks and Recreation Department um, are maintained by uh, Forestry Parks and Cemeteries Division of, of the DPW. Um, but there's a separate crew, um, land groundskeeping crew for the schools, um, which their headquarters are actually um, behind the survival center. Uh, they have a garage behind the survival center, and they do all of the um, maintenance and, and mowing and field maintenance for, they do all the ball fields for, um, you know, at the high school, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Not the most, maybe not the most efficient <laughs> Streamlined. I agree with you, but again, um, as is often the case, there's often a concern that if it becomes in one of the long-standing concerns is that if it, if it does get folded into the city, will the schools get the priority that they think they need? You know what I'm saying? As opposed to when they have their own staff doing it. Mm -hmm. um, so, it's but in an era of kind of regional purchasing and no doubt about you know, it. we know that it's actually money saving, so it's kind of potentially, an interesting yeah. model. Potentially, yeah, no, no doubt about it. But it's a, it's a, um, yeah. And it's also often about the people and um, the people who, you know, we've been able to, over time, when we had a retirement with the IT department, that was an opportunity 
but the school IT department, that was an opportunity to do a, a merger. This is not even in any of your purview, but it's just, I'm just giving you the background on why it is the way it is. Um, so, and also, you know, again, it shows you the fact that the school does have its own independent authority. I can't reorganize the school. I can't issue it. If I could, tomorrow I'd do an administrative order and I'd merge those two, but I don't have that power to do that, so it's outside of my authority. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Thank you for your time. Uh, no problem. Time. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank, thank Take care. You. Thanks. Bye. That was very helpful. So, um, um, we will need to decide. Um, I don't think we need to do it inside the meeting, um, but we need to decide who's going to contact the mayor's office to schedule these things. And as far as I understand it, it's going to be the two of you who do all these departmental interviews. I just still, <laughs> is that still okay? Well, I do think that we as a body should discuss what we're going to ask them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And for um, sure. unfortunately, that's not on the agenda. So that puts us out a little bit more unless we can eke it in the agenda. Well, um, we're, we have a number seven discussion of ways to solicit information from experts. So I think that actually okay. is exactly what we can do during that period. And I think we should have a little bit more of a discussion about um, whether or not there's certain people that we want to actually come and speak before us. Mm -hmm. um, so I would like that to be included in that number seven as well. Yeah, that's actually what I had in mind for that those agenda items. But um, under review of committee member assignments and plans, I think that mm -hmm. the, what we're gonna, what you all are gonna be talking to people about would, would fit okay. into that. Okay, I just want to make sure we have that opportunity. Absolutely. And I, I don't I know, Jim. Important. I mean, this is uh, you know, you and I don't too, but whatever. But it sounds like it's about four places, five. Um, I have five. Central. Yeah, go ahead. Which ones no, do you have? Yeah. Well, I have the health department, I have central services, I have DPW, planning and sustainability, and the Board of Health. They're both diff they're different, right? Board of Health and I, Health Department. I, I would, for this, just go to the health department. Yeah. Okay. And then hopefully the schools. And hopefully the, the schools. The, the, the interesting thing is that um, I believe central services has is where is the overarching department that also oversees the, the school grounds. That's what I was trying to kind of pin the mayor on and my understanding is that's not true from what he just said. Well, I think within that overarching, and then it gets broken down to th this is this is the school portion of central services, and here's the the city. So there's like school employees that are doing it, but not central services. I, I I think that's the yeah. Case. yeah. So when I was putting together this presentation for the Board of Health four or five years ago, I made some calls to some schools. So this is anecdotal information, okay? Um, and, you know, what I learned was that the, the, the staff people that I talked to were not necessarily very well informed about what the policies were. And when I specifically asked about situations they ran, ran across, it turned out they just went to the hardware store and bought some spray and went and took care of whatever they considered to be the problem. So I don't know that central services is going to be very, you know, and so they certainly wouldn't be aware of that mm -hmm. example. Um, but every school is supposed to have a record in the central office that any parent or maybe anybody in the public can go and say, I'd like to see the list of what, what chemicals you're using in the school, on the school grounds. It would be interesting, you know, if anyone had the time to do that, what you'd find out. But. Um, there's also an informal uh, thing going on that um, I, I have no idea whether where whether that ever appears in any records that record keeping. 
You but it would be very interesting. To the hardware store. Type exactly. Of so you know that would be one of the questions that that I would think would be interesting to ask uh, the school folks is you know if somebody in the school grounds perceives there's a you know a problem and they go to the hardware store how is that how does that get reported mm -hmm. or does it get reported? Mm -hmm. um, can I just bring up on this? Uh, Board of Health can regulate mm -hmm. health in schools. Mm -hmm. So you have more authority than the city council is what you're saying. Right. And I'll just give an example. We decided that there should be no smoking in the school grounds mm -hmm. and in school attached areas. We just did that. Mm -hmm. So I put I, I just want to put that out there. And the second thing I want to put out there is that you know I attended this webinar thing for the toxic action and they said the most effective pesticide policies in cities and towns in Massachusetts come from the Board of Health. Now I'm not saying I want to, the board, I can't speak on behalf of the Board of Health, but we do have that ability, the may refer to it as statutory ability, to do this. And, um, there is a model, city of Marbleton, the model of city Mar Marblehead. Marblehead, yeah. Um, and so I just think we just need to remember that in terms of our, mm -hmm. you know, our future recommendations or, and again, I'm not saying the board is taking this up. I don't think it's been beyond Adele's presentation, you know, brought to their attention and perhaps the result of this committee can bring it to us. I really appreciate that you're bringing that up, Cindy, because um, and I think that's why, speaking for Adele here, Adele and I both turned to the Board of Health as our first kind of attempt to try and address pesticide use in the city. <coughs> and to be perfectly blunt mm -hmm. and speaking just for myself, not finding a lot of resonance there mm -hmm. or interest in kind of pursuing this, that's kind of how I then began the process that I began. Um, to see what we could do about pesticide reduction in the city. But I think you're right that most of the models that we have in the state of Massachusetts and the Commonwealth are that boards of health have kind of stepped up and made a decision about changing how pesticides are used. So, you know, I would love it if there were some way in which we could engage the board of health in a really substantive conversation here. And that might be something that we also want to think about in terms of who we invite and who we talk to. And so maybe adding that. And then one other thing, going back to something that we've talked about um, just before this, the list um, of who to talk to, we have to keep in mind that there may be more than one person in each department that ends up needing to be talked mm -hmm. to. And so when we submit that list to the mayor, as he suggested, we should say kind of what the information is that we want mm -hmm. to gather so that, you know, we might speak to Wayne um, because he's the staff to the Ag Commission. We may speak to Sarah LaValle, who's the conservation officer, and she works with the Conservation Commission. So um, let's not lose sight of how much work this entails because if you guys are going to be doing some of these interviews separate from, you know, like a public process here, um, Let's just think of who you know the potential places are. So there are four departments, maybe or five departments, but it could end up being ten people or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. And the question will be: Do they want to come together, or do they want to come separately? And I think that will probably wind up being a decision of the department head, right? Or some of them maybe could be people that are interviewed one on one versus coming to speak to us as a body. Mm -hmm. I, I think it would be helpful to have the different departments come to the meeting here and provide the testimony and that um, that our role what our role could be is is contacting those departments and helping to prepare you know any any of the questions you know for any of the questions that we're going to ask so that when they're here they can be efficient um, that um, I, I think it's I think it's important to hear from all of the departments in, in a public forum like this, mm. you know, that um, that you know that our outreach is just to help them get prepared and let them know what it is we're looking for and what they can expect. Um, that's that's my thought on it. 
Okay, that's very interesting. Uh, it looks like you want to say something. Well, so exactly what are we looking for? Invoices, <laughs> MSDS sheets, I think both of them. I mean, MSDS sheets, I, I'm trying to remember what the MS stands for. I can't, but I know DS stands for a data sheet. And what it is, is all the data that's available from whatever chemical is. I mean, even soaps come with MSDS sheets. You know, usually it's part of the packing slip on products. It's material safety data yeah. sheet. Okay. I remember half of it. <laughs> but uh, that is material safety. Yeah. So we want those kinds of things, I think, but we also want to have a conversation and a back and forth that's kind of about what is the thinking behind this use? Why, you know, was this chosen as opposed to a less toxic management? I mean, I, I think that there's guess, richness in conversation that will happen organically, no pun intended. Um, at the same time as, you know, we need the cold hard data. And I think that's the balance of scientists here versus people who aren't scientists is that, you know, there are different ways to process all the information that we want to gather. The different kinds of information. Right, I guess I see an inventory as number one. You can't do anything without an inventory. Mm -hmm. You need to know what you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. And then. So right, I'm not, I'm not saying it, it's an either or thing. I'm yeah. saying, you know, we Both. want all of this. Right. And the question is, What's the most efficient way to get that information? Um, my concern about having them come here as uh, to address the entire committee uh, and the public is that scheduling is a problem and that we could wind up with many canceled meetings because we don't have a quorum. Um, I'm also concerned that they may feel more intimidated coming in here where the, something's being filmed than they would sitting down with two people in you know their office maybe having a back and forth conversation. So th th that's, uh, that's my concern. Uh, that makes sense in terms of efficiency, trying to get as much information as possible in a short amount of time that we're allotted, right? Have mm -hmm. someone interview. Right. Unless we scheduled um, two meeting and had the information come to us ahead of time. So two departments, they have the information, and they'll send it to us and then present it so we have some time to go at, Yeah, not, in, under open meeting law, what does it mean for them to send us the information? Who are they, are they sending it to the whole committee? I guess that's okay, as long as we don't discuss it. Right, we and can then, gather the and information. The public record, we right. would bring it to put it on the agenda of the meeting. It needs to be included so that the public can access it. But you're right. What's the time frame? When do we have to? We have to have a report by November 10th, is it? Oh, I thought it was December. I, I was hoping it come December. I it was <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. We had our first meeting in July. When did we officially convene? Because it's five months from the date that we officially convened. It was something like July 22nd. It so was about a month ago. So it would be five months from that date. Well, we should we, we should know right right here from our July minutes. July right? 8th. Yeah. Oh, it was July 8th. Yeah. So what is five months from July 8th? So this is December 8th. December 8th. Okay. So I think we should have a draft report on you know early November. If we're going to have something to submit on in early December. Gonna, so backing up from early November, that, that basically gives us 10 weeks from today, maybe 11. But you know, we do have a couple holidays coming up. So um, it's 10 weeks and we haven't, we, uh, as part of our uh, planning, we need to decide how often we're meeting. And so that's another thing that we could, we could decide that we're going to meet every two weeks and that gives us more opportunities to have these folks come and address the entire committee if that's what the committee wants. I'd like to say that I absolutely think we need to meet every two weeks. And you know, as long as we have a quorum, which is three out of five, we can proceed with meetings. Um, and I would just like to add too that I think that Jim has a really good point in terms of um, having people come and present to us, the, the staff people. 
it, it also ends up on the public record. On the, I mean, whatever notes you take from your meetings, if you have individual meetings, that would become public record too, but there is a certain power to having on public record, you know, a, a, a head of department coming and speaking to us and stating what's done. Um, so there's a part of me that kind of is drawn to that model, um, but I also want us to be efficient, and I think it's a point well taken, um, Adele, that you know you want as much uh, ability to get real information from people, and sometimes that happens much more in a one-on-one -on -one conversation. So it's kind of a little bit six and one half a dozen of the other kind of thing in terms of what the outcomes are. <clears throat> what if, let's, let's think hypothetically here, what if I had one head of a department um, wanted, uh, was aware of the fact that their official policies were really not being followed very well? Um, I would imagine that that person would be reluctant to say that in this setting, when the whole thing's being recorded, what might be more likely to confide their concerns if they were meeting with the two of you, uh, you know, quietly somewhere say, you know, what we really need is to educate our employees better. But I can't imagine why they would want to say that here. So that's part of, you know, um, I'm wondering, you know, if we'll get full disclosure if everything is just completely on the public record to, in the, to the point of being recorded. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't know how department heads feel day-to-day -day challenges and struggles working in the city. I just simply don't know. I, my sense is that if they're having, in this example, an enforcement issue, I don't think they're going to come clean with that. In I, any, if in I were any head of the department, I don't think I would want yeah. to do that. Even one-on-one. On one. Yeah. I don't know. Our department heads are very savvy, though, and know that anything that they share will become public record, no matter how they share it, whether they do it in a public forum or in an interview that will become public information. Mm -hmm. um, that said, I think you're right. You know, you build a relationship with someone you're, you're interviewing, as it were, and mm -hmm. talking to, and so things may come out in particular ways. But I would bet that our department heads will be very careful in speaking as a one-on-one -on -one kind of process. I mean, what I hear is we don't have the staff. We don't have the staff to do this. So, so my experience with department heads around pesticide use, I've, I've had discussions with both Donna and uh, with uh, Rich Parasoletti, um, and their, their answers are very detailed. They, they really are, they, they may not be doing exactly what we're trying to get to, but they are someplace, you know, their, their applications are thoughtful and in relationship to what the, the law allows. And, you know, what, I, what I'm anticipating is with this discussion is we're going to push them, our hope is we can push them a little more towards um, you know, using less uh, chemicals and pesticides. And I think they're, they want to go that way. But I, I, I can tell you that, that, you know, that all of these department heads, that they've really thought about this. And that, um, I, you know, if we bring Wayne in to talk about the use of Roundup on any of the conservation properties, I'm sure he, he could talk for 20 minutes about all of the different things that the city's gone through to arrive where they're at right now. And, and, and probably has an idea of how to move forward, too. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I don't think that, that there's going to be anything on the down low, you know, by us meeting with them in their offices that, um, yeah, and, and like Elisa was sharing, they, they're they very savvy. They know everything that they put out is, it's, it's like city councilor emails. We know that this could end up all over the place. Right. So, um, Front page news. All right. Well, shall we? Um, shall we, as a committee, uh, make a joint decision about how we want to interview the department heads? Uh, whether we want to interview them separately, privately, or uh, in a public setting um, during a committee meeting. So, uh, do I need to phrase that as a uh, as something we vote on? 
Like make a motion? I would like make a motion. <laughs> you get a second? And... <laughs> well, I'll make a motion that we um, that we interview department heads here in during our meetings. I'll second that. I mean, this is funny because we've already had discussion here because it was on our agenda, but this is where we open it up at this point for discussion, as it were. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we're, we may not be doing it perfectly, but we're, we are doing it in a very open fashion. <laughs> um, a, a more discussion from anyone who has strong feelings about this? Well, I would like to add that the mayor's recommendation that we be clear about what it is we're asking first, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, and then we provide that to people and that um, uh, Cindy and I can be the, the contact person if people need further clarification. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, but that it's clear as to what it is they're being asked to do. And I, I would imagine a lot of this might be that they're going to print stuff up and bring it and say, we apply this, 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 you know, here you go. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so putting together the questions ahead of time. Absolutely. I'm in agreement with that. So may, just kind of uh, logistically, then maybe what your roles could be is more like you say, uh, d defining what it is that needs to be discussed, not but you won't actually be the one-on-one -on -one kind of interviewers, as it were. And I just, I also want to say, like, we're not necessarily asking to talk to department heads, as the mayor said. We're, we're saying which departments we think we need to talk to and what we need covered, and then they'll be internally figuring out who they would send to discuss the points. So we're not asking for department heads, but departments. Mm -hmm. Right. But the vote on the floor is, um, do we want to do this during the full meeting? Mm -hmm. Do you mean have people come in? Yeah. Okay. So, um, do you have strong feelings about this, Kate? Do you want to I contribute to the discussion? I personally feel like it would be more more efficient for us to interview the people. <coughs> it's a, I guess I see it as just a matter of compiling that inventory, mm -hmm. which seems to me could be more readily obtained just by meeting. And uh, one of when we compile this list of questions that we want to ask that we provide them in advance, one of those things could be we will need um, an inventory of every chemical that gets used. And how much or where, how you know, whatever it is you decide to put on your list. But so they could bring the inventory along if they came here. What about? Let me just want to throw out as part of this discussion. What about a friendly amendment that we invite them to come to committee meeting, but if we're unable to get that scheduled within the next four weeks, that we set up individual appointments. That sounds good. Because I'm, I'm just worried it's going to go on and on and on. I, I, I would amend the amendment. <laughs> just because there's Jim and I, and that's two schedules. But if each one of us took a department, that might fast track it if we decide to do the one. Just a, a recommendation. So it could be one or two of you. So if you if your schedules melded, you could go together. Or no, not. I didn't. I never thought. Oh, you know. I was thinking we would, but. Oh, okay. <laughs> See? Good to clarify. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, that well, two heads are always better than they one. They sure but. are, but wow, the schedule is. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, you know, I do have another discussion point. Oh, but the amendment was the amendment official, and we should be. How do we make an amendment official? I'm not sure, clear on that. You make the amendment, somebody seconds it, and you have we to. have to discuss the amendment and get it off the floor before we go back to the bigger discussion. Thank you. Let's so, with the bigger discussion. <laughs> um, so we have two amendments. 
that were proposed, right? Well, I think so, what we need to do, I'll second your amendment so we can discuss it and and then Cindy can. Wait, what was the amendment again? That would be a, a, this needs to be recorded by the way. A staged uh, process. We invite them to come to a committee meeting, but if that's not turning out to be possible in a short time frame, that we then um, schedule individual meetings. Okay. And then was I guess I could change it to with either with either one or two of the of our committee members. So I would like to speak to the amendment. We're doing discussion about the amendment. And that is that in our discussion it's making it's kind of making me think that what happens when you do a one on one interview, at the same time that there could be some richness there that wouldn't come out in a public talking, what gets lost, I think, is that you have one person maybe listening to, let's say, Wayne Fiden talk, trying to keep notes. And we just demonstrated how two people can hear the same thing and it gets translated in a different way in your brain mm -hmm. and then you have to bring it back to the committee. There's a way in which I feel like the, this material that we're collecting is subject to open meeting law, it's something that the entire public should know. We should have it on record through recording. And that's, that's what kind of will give us the most, the truest, the most accurate information in a very particular way, an ex accessible information, as opposed to having individuals interviewing individual people, them keeping notes, them coming back to the committee and telling us what was said. There are so many stages in that process where information can get garbled or forgotten or missed. So the more we talk, the more I feel like Yes, I'm more than willing to go with this amendment that if there's no way to get somebody on time, um, you know, that an inter in one on one interview happened, but I am feeling more strongly that it's important that we have people come and speak to us as a body and that it's recorded. So that they so that's strong preference. Yeah. So that's 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 what I I like I said, I would support this amendment because I want to be practical, but I my first preference is to have people come in here scheduled for the whole group. Which was the original um, motion? Yes, I can go back yes. to that. I'm tracking original. Thank vote. you. <laughs> Do you have who made it and who seconded it? Yeah, Jim and Jim and you uh, first and second, and then we moved to the discussion, which gave us another amendment from Adele. Great. And we're on discussion of that amendment. And you indicated, Elise, you want to go back to ours. No, well, or, that, that comment sorry, that I just yeah. gave was yeah, fits yeah. into this amendment discussion. <coughs> other, mm. So it, it's like we're, we're creating a safety valve should we not be able to bring people in. And I'm fine with that, but I, I, I do, you know, based on what the, the mayor shared and if we provide enough opportunities for people to show up, I, I think that Link can fill up that, that schedule. So. I'm okay. hoping we don't need to. Use I hope so too. It sounds you've convinced me that it's better to have them come here. <clears throat> all departments. All, all, the all departments. Uh, four. Okay. As opposed to a one on one. As opposed to starting out with just trying to schedule one on one meetings or two on one meetings or two on two meetings or whatever. Okay, so I think we have to vote on the first to vote on the amendment, then vote on the original motion, is that right? Oh, it's so hard for me. <clears throat> um, all in favor of the amendment. Could you use, uh, uh, well, I'll state what I think it is. Oh, good. Or maybe Thank you. I'm not sure I have it, though. That's good. <laughs> uh, that's, the amendment is to stage the process with one-on-one -on -one interview, interviews. And if that scheduling doesn't work, you move to having the department heads come to the oh, so yeah, I thought it was the other way around. around. OK. So. so um, First priority is to have invite the department heads and their representatives to come to a committee meeting, our committee meeting, and, and give and testify, and that we would provide questions in advance. And that if that becomes impossible within a month to schedule, that we would 
do individual do interviews. individual interviews with um, one or two of our committee members going uh, meeting with whoever the department had designates. And that's the amendment to the amendment, correct? I think it's an amendment to the motion. If they don't, if we don't get their information within the month, it just if we're not able about, to what schedule. Was the original, what was the original motion? Could you could you to say? interview the department heads during our together? Ah, okay. So then the amendment is just that if that doesn't work within a, four weeks, within four weeks, or be, before the end of September, that then we would go to a different process of interview scheduling. That's a streamlined way for you. And so we have to come up with a question. Yeah. Okay. But first we have to vote on the amendment. Oh, sorry. Then we have to vote on the motion. <laughs> okay. We need a first and second to this Oh, we already had that. She made the amendment. Oh. And she oh, second the amendment. Second. I'm amendment. sorry. This is this is this yeah. is the most challenging part of this part. Parliamentary <laughs> procedure is really <laughs> and you know what? Everybody should have a Rob, um, you know, Robert's Rules of Order book that we're looking at. If you want to wrap one in here, oh, look at it. Maybe we should no. all have a there. Um, okay, so now let's vote on this amendment. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any, anyone standing aside? Anyone opposed? Okay, it's unanimous. And then let's vote on the motion. Which is to invite the departments to come talk to us at a committee meeting. Um, as amended. As amended, thank you. <laughs> oh, this could kill a person. Yes. Um, He's going to write. <laughs> yeah, you are. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone standing aside? Anyone opposed? Okay, we've passed that. Um, so uh, related to that plan, we need to just determine what questions we're going to provide with, to them in advance and what dates are we going to offer them. So we have to come up with our meeting dates. Then. So uh, I would suggest we come up with a, a plan for our meetings between now and the beginning of November so that we can then work from there. Just uh, a point of procedure. Um, we do have to acknowledge public comment, I think, on the agenda. Yes. Okay, so. And that there was. Yes, okay. There, there was uh, no one from the public showed up for public comment, so that's taken care of. And then we have moved um, item nine forward, so we're, do, we're actually doing item nine now. And then we're going to move, move into six, seven, and eight. Okay. Item nine being review of committee member summons. Yes, because so this to me this comes under plans. Um, I forgot to put on the agenda um, scheduling future meetings, um, but it seems like that's here. Yeah. We just have to say that's part of planning. Um, is it okay? I, I suggest that we meet every two weeks, and then if we just that we don't need to meet that often, we can always drop back. But uh, we're on a very tight time frame. We have 10 weeks to produce a draft report. So, uh, <clears throat> what, um, does anyone have a strong objection to meeting every two weeks? Good, no one's objecting. <laughs> okay, so, um, and two weeks from today, of course, is Labor Day, so that's not going to work. <laughs> it's today is not Monday. <laughs> today is not Monday. <laughs> it is. <laughs> you know, you're right. Today is not Monday. Today is Thursday. Um, two weeks from today is uh, September 5th. I will not be back yet from um, Labor Day holiday. Um, <clears throat> How about after that weekend? How about um, we be back on Friday the 6th? If we're trying to do two weeks? Mm -hmm. uh, I will not be. But we could do, um, I would be back Monday, uh, I'm going in the direction here, uh, Monday the 9th. Mm -hmm. 
works for me tonight. Me too. Uh, 10 a.m.? That works for me. Yeah. Okay, so that's, um, okay, Monday the 9th, 10 a.m. Okay, so then, do we want to continue a pattern of meeting on Mondays? Sure. Okay, then the next Monday uh, will be the 23rd. It's two weeks. What'd you say? What? She was one of Barbie's, Barbie's nieces. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. It's our initials. The Science Committee on Pesticide Reduction is SCPR. Skipper. Oh, good. So we're the oh. Skipper Commission. <laughs> That's awesome. Maybe we could come up with a better name. Uh -huh. um, I like that. I don't like that too. It's, it's kind of jaunty. <laughs> All right. So then we have October 7th. Does that, does that sound good to people? Okay. And then there's October 21st. Oh, excellent. We're, gonna, we're, we're skipping over the week of um, Columbus Day, which is good. And Yom Kippur. Yeah. Yeah. We're not going to have any of those conflicts. Monday the 21st. All right. And then November 4th. It be this easy. No way. How about Monday, November 4th? That happens to be my birthday. We can celebrate. Mm -hmm. Oh, sweet. Okay. <laughs> I'll get you a roundup cake. <laughs> <laughs> you think they make those at Carvel? <laughs> uh, I, bet there, I bet there is roundup in that Carvel cake. Okay, so that's uh, November 4th. And then. And November 18. December 2nd. So that by then we should be done, right? Mm -hmm. it, uh, report is due then uh, that week. So um, theoretically, well, we, why don't we go ahead and say that we could meet uh, December 16th if if we had in a need to, for some reason. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. Are we okay. doing the second to December yes. second? Yes. Okay. So when we contact the mayor's office, we would be asking people to come between 10 and 12 department, departmental people between 10 and 12 on September 9th and September, or September 23rd. Correct? Yes. yes. Okay. So it's almost like a matrix we have to create so that we can fit the people in, because we'll have more than one person. How much time do you think we want with each department we have? Did we say, we said four departments, right? It, uh, well, that didn't include the schools, but so let's let's be optimistic just, and say five. I'm just wondering though, we haven't developed a list yet. Mm -hmm. and the best scenario, scenario of questions, they would be developed today. Mm -hmm. Then it goes to the mayor's office, and then it goes to the department head. So September 9th might be ambitious, particularly if we have a long list of things to produce, but we can give it a shot. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the questions we want to ask are embedded in the resolution itself, and but they're not, I mean, some are worded as questions, but um, I think we need to take a little time to tease out what the actual, I mean, we're going to go here. shall study and evaluate the city's current management of turf conservation areas and other municipal green space particularly around schools and other locations where children play so you know there there's a question right there alternatives to pesticide use including but not limited to integrated pest management and organic management so right there there's two questions that there's within that that I think we want to ask city staff 
mm -hmm. uh, policies and practices from other jurisdictions to reduce pesticide use. I think that's where our research is going to come in. Estimated cost as well as potential grants instead of programs. I think that is. Um, but I think that's a question that uh, we may want to ask city staff if, what they're aware of. Um, recommended benchmarks with respect to the goal of achieving an overall reduction in the use of pesticides consistent with sound pesticide pest management practices. So, and I think that's another question that we want to say, where are you going? What's, you know, um, so, and then there was, we had, we defined pesticide in here. It's a, a footnote on the first page, and it's, that needs to be supplied to everyone. Oh, yeah. Realize we're talking about the whole, for purposes of this resolution, as guided by the National Association of State Departments of Agriculture Research, Research Foundation, the term pesticide includes insecticides, herbicides, fungicides, rodenticides, and other toxins designed to manage or regulate plant growth. Pests are defined as undesirable plants, insects, fungi, bacteria, rodents, birds, and other animals. So we can copy that onto our, whatever we submit to the mayor's office for him to share, I think, with, the, with all the questions that we develop. I think that's really important because otherwise we can have people. I mean, I also just find everyone trips over that, like, oh, that's an herbicide. Now it has so this, the term yes, pesticides the is now being used as yeah. an umbrella yeah. term for all of those. Right. So just very important to make that clear. Mm -hmm. Yes. But I think Jim has a point. I mean, I, I think we want to ask for the MSDM, whatever they're called. Yes. <laughs> ask for those sheets. MSDS. Um, and that includes how they're applied, you said? Or no, how they're supposed no, to be applied? It's, it's, it's data sheets, so it's about the chemicals. So we also want to ask them how they're applied, so that's a very technical question. So, And then just the broader kind of terms here that Jim just read that are here, you know, what the current practices are. Well, could we break it down into questions like what after the definition, what pesticides are in use by by the department? Please How supply it. MSDS. MS supply, supply invoices and MSDS. She right? Yeah. Um, Method of application. How much is used each year? Where and how is it applied? Oh, good. Yeah. Um, to what extent are, are organic or IPM methods used? What else? Yeah, organic, that's kind of a squishy term. Has a lot of meanings. IPM. What about IPM? Well, I guess well, organic, uh, I guess um, integrated pest management, actually. They're in the organic community. I just went to the NOFA conference this uh, two weekends ago. Is IPM has become kind of anathema in the organic community because it's used. Um, as a way to kind of justify pesticide use by many applicators and managers of turf. So um, the organic community is now off of the concept of IPM. And I wrote this before I was aware of that, but that's just an aside. Well, why don't we um, use the word organic, but, but define it um, or, or explain it better so it's not too big. You could say, um, to what extent are IPM methods used uh, to what extent are methods used that are approved by, um, or less less toxic methods? I mean, I know from talking to Rich Parcelletti, for instance, that he has taken the initiative to apply, um, I forget what it is, something for grub management that is considered non-toxic. And it's not necessarily an organic, per se, procedure, but it's certainly less toxic. So. I think we want to have some open-ended questions that are like, what are the things that you've put in place to reduce pesticide use or something like that? I think it's OK to create some open-ended questions, too, mm -hmm. because it'll allow people to kind of talk through things. And that might, I don't know if you're making a face because I, well, it's not a it's scientific, not, It's but. not a simple issue. 
clearly. Because in my head, I can think, well, boric acid is a very effective pesticide for fleas, but I use boric acid as an eye wash. So when you talk about toxic, you know, like not every pesticide is toxic and we're all different. So I, I want us to be really careful. I think it's really important that we have scientists here and I'm really grateful that you're willing to do this, but I also think that we're talking about kind of broad policy. So there's only so much level of kind of granular information that we necessarily need on this committee. I think you're right, Adele, we have to set benchmarks so you need to know where you're coming from. But I don't think that our, we're not, this isn't a scientific committee per se, and I don't feel like we need to, to get really specific about what the effects are and what the effects aren't of every single thing that's used. I think we have to think more broadly or we're gonna get bogged down and we're not gonna be able to move forward with making recommendations. So I just want us to be really careful that we're thinking, um, we're thinking about that and we're not, we're not going too broad, but we're also not getting too granular because that will, one, we're not equipped to do that and two, it will keep us from doing what we're gonna ultimately try and do, which is make some broad recommendations for how the city starts to do things differently to reduce pesticide What use. if we use a general term when we're asking the question like, what, um, what efforts have you made to use less toxic methods? And then the follow-up question would be, because then, the, then they'll say, oh, well, we've tried this, this, and this, or we go with this first, and then we can say, well, what exactly is that? So we're, we would, um, what they consider less toxic, maybe you wouldn't consider less toxic, Kate, you know, or, or, you know, vice versa. So, uh, but, but we would still be getting the information. Right. So we could ask the question less to as less toxic, and then we, then we follow up with, and so what were those things that you used, and how were they applied, and when? And then we make our own determination whether we think they were less toxic or not. So, yeah, would, so would boric acid be used around turf or conservation Oh, well, I just used it once in a house I lived in. Right. So it's just an example. It's not exactly, something that exactly. we would be expecting. So to it's show. like for killing off roaches or an infestation of Fleet insects. Is, or, well, that was in your case, but right. but it might be. I I don't know if the city uses it anywhere. I don't but, either. Right. That's why the inventory is number one. Right. 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 So what we're trying to get at is what's being used. Exactly. And I think um, that part of what we're doing it here is that by limiting things to turf and conservation areas that we're not going to get into i don't think we're going to get into things used in bathrooms and buildings and things like that um well I, i'm not sure in the schools you know, it's possible right we, i don't know i, I don't know we'll do. um, we're talking about pesticides you know with that broad definition broadly and we we I think we've been thinking about it in terms of like turf and green right. spaces, but yeah, yeah, that's a question we have to yeah. answer. We're talking know. about internal chemicals, but only if they're not not cleaning materials because we're talking about pesticides. pesticides. So well, you know, if they have but a rat problem in the schools, too. are they putting out right. rat poison? Right. 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 There's one thing we right. Right. Know. Right. Exactly. right. Um, and and if so. How are they putting it out? And where is it going? And how much are they using, et cetera? And actually, the cleaning materials, though, that is something that I, I've talked to people on the school committee about. They're thinking about, too, about um, addressing that. So that's a whole other topic. Because uh, yeah, there are very toxic cleaning materials that are used in the So, do we want to go there to start looking at buildings as opposed to just grounds? I, I would suggest we, when it comes to killing pesticides, if we're killing creatures, yes, we want to know that. Okay. Okay. That's just highly toxic. I oh, I agree. I, I, up to now, I've just been thinking ground properties, yeah. like, you know, and yeah, yeah. not the interiors of buildings. Yeah. Yeah. So, Little did you know. Cindy, were right. you able to get the questions? <laughs> I, I have a list, but we keep changing, so yeah. I, I don't want to. Because uh, I think I liked 
where you went, Adele, with the questions, the beginning of the questions. Okay, yes. so what pesticides are in your in use in your department? Um, how much is used each year? Where are they applied and how are they applied? Um, if possible, we would like to have copies of the invoices and MSDS for each chemical. And then we said, I think what we are now talking about is to what extent um, is your department using methods that you consider to be less toxic or in an effort to use less toxic products? What are the products and how are they used and where? It is interesting, I'm just going, I'm afraid I have to do this, just go back to what Jim brought up about stuff used um, in buildings because the um, mandate of the resolution that form this group says specifically the city's management of turf, conservation areas, and other municipal green space. So it doesn't talk about use inside buildings. I don't know if that necessarily means we can't add that, but I think we have to be explicit in our question asking if we decide that's what we're doing. Just because it's not in the mandate of the resolution. So in my opinion, that would be particularly relevant in the schools. So that would be something that we would reserve for the, the school department, I would think. Well, it could be one of those things we hand off that in terms of, you know, while we're interviewing people, we could ask them, you know, are there pesticides used within the school, in the cafeteria, you know, around food preparation, things like that. And you know they can provide us with the answers, and then we can provide recommendations to the school department because we're going to have to hand off everything to the school department. Right. Oh, I see what you mean by hand off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. Right. Or or to the board of health. Or to the board. Of health. But that's way in the future. So there may be a way we can go there that's within because we're gonna we're gonna have findings as we go. I mean, we're investigating and we're learning things, and mm -hmm. so we're learning things about other uses, and we can therefore make recommendations. I feel comfortable making safety recommendations outside of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we want to have a why question anywhere? And the reason I'm asking that is because I'm thinking about the conservation areas that are managed with Roundup that the City Council um, approves uh, Community Preservation Act funds to purchase. Um, you know, I had a number of discussions with Sarah Labelle, who's the conservation agent and for the city and the people who use it, the Broadway Coalition in particular. Um, and they talk about all the other things they tried that didn't work, the fact that it's on, you know, in Fitzgerald Lake and they can't use goats or any of the other methods. And so I think some of that, that why have you turned to or why are you using? How about what factors um, influence your decision about whether to use a pesticide? Yeah. That's a good point because there's this um, neighborhood off of South Street. That, and I don't know if anybody like lives. No. Oh, neighborhood South, South Street. Um, you know, at Columbus Avenue. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. That there's a there is a strong group of people who come to the Board of Health mm -hmm. because it's near. This is out of my view house. The meadows mm -hmm. and the mosquito population is crazy. Yeah. You could just go into town and you're fine. You go and so oh. so this question, the why question, oh. that's going to influence a decision when you have citizens complaining. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a good issue. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there are a lot of reasons. I used to live in that neighborhood and that was insane. Was it? Yeah. I, mean, I, oh. I can't believe it. you literally couldn't walk from your door to your car without like getting. 
So <laughs> I'm not moving to that neighborhood. <laughs> so we have questions, but Jim proposed some earlier things to be taken out of the charge. Well, let's see if they're covered in the list. The charge. Well, we sent I questions to them. What's in the charge is exactly what um, Adele addressed with her. I don't say any harm in including the uh, city council resolution, resolution along yeah. with the definition of pesticide and then the specific questions that we want. Does that sound okay to everybody else? Not making a motion or anything, just <laughs> asking. Yeah. Could, you, could you read through the list of questions again? And I want to just like, in terms of what we're asking there and then what's in the, the resolution, I want to make sure we're covering. Let's have you read it. Okay. Yours the ones that kind of go in the minutes. And just a question, uh, what, what's the value added to the invoices? Because that could be a nightmare. What's the value added to it? Invoices. The mayor suggested just that. a list, you know, just you, you have to pick it out, but it's just a list of what was ordered, what people, what, what was purchased. purchased. Yeah, but um, isn't that covered with the MSDS? Because we have to be specific what kind of invoices we're looking for. Or what. But at the same time, yeah, I guess MSDS sheets could be anything. Because soap that goes in the dispenser comes mm -hmm. in the MSDS sheet. You know oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's one or the other. That's fine. Um, well, the invoice would tell us how much, right? Correct. And an MSDS sheet wouldn't. No. And I think we want to know how much as well. Because yes. what? Was the, what was ordered, but how much of it? I mean, if it's a minuscule quantity. Oh, quantity versus price. Yeah, we want to know the quantity. Do you don't know how much of it's applied or how long it lasts, though? Well, we don't. We wouldn't know how much was actually used. It could be sitting on the shelf, <coughs> but at least we know how much it was purchased, right? Okay. Just my that might be the thing that they're like, oh God, I'm gonna get that. It's gonna take me longer. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how invoicing is done. In this I don't either. Um, well, I think. That could be an area where, when we're talking to the departments, is it? I mean, the core of what we want is how much and how often it's used. We, you know, I we don't. I don't feel like I need to see, you know, July first we bought, you know, five yeah. cans of hornet spray, you know. But I do want to see that over a year, we've been buying the hornet spray and we've used it at these locations. Mm -hmm. um, right. So, so however they want to report it. Okay. I'm sorry, what did you say? Is that work orders would give you that information? I'm you know, sure we might just works. ask the department people that. Yeah. Um, I, feel I feel like we need to be careful, one, that we're not um, overwhelming people, we're right. not putting them off this process. I mean, I want us to also be sensitive to the fact that these are the people that ultimately we're going to be making recommendations to and wanting them to carry out. I mean, I, I just think, I think we don't want to make enemies in this process. We don't want to aggravate people. Yeah. That's not not a good method. <laughs> well, we could start out with a question of asking them how much is used and when. Um, and then if we want more detail, we could say how much trouble would it be for you to actually provide us with the invoices if we wanted to tally it up. But that doesn't really tell you which is used or when, right? No, but we would be asking them that. And, right. and, and, and But that might be perceived as a friendlier question yeah. than yeah. could you please provide all your invoices. And then, but, but we could always follow up with a request for invoices, right? Mm -hmm. and, and But we could even explain to them in person why we would be asking for that so that it doesn't seem quite so offensive. I. I want us to be really mindful that we're not a tribunal and that we're not, we're also not a scientific committee um, and that we're kind of trying to get a, a, a broad picture <clears throat> more than like go deep into specifics. So uh, yeah, I, I think we have to strike a good balance here between you know being credible and creating benchmarks but also keep them broad enough that we're not creating some 
complete the onerous new system for the city? Well, then we could just start out with these general questions, not ask for the invoices or the MSDS. Um, and then if we decide later that we really need those, we can we'll go back to them in as friendly a way as possible and ask for it. But we would not have, have had a whole process of, and discussion about whether we really need to do that and why. Except I think MSDS is my memory is they're they're housed in one place. Correct. So um, I don't think that's going to be hard. Um, Let's hope they're. The only difficulty would be going through them and seeing which ones are relevant. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh -huh. I, I think it's the invoices that I would be like that might be just a little much because we're already asking how much is used each year. We can say each month. Each and you know when we talk to central services, they may have, a, they may even be able to tell us yeah. how much was mm -hmm. spent on X, Y, or Z. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll see. <clears throat> so I can read these and see if they match yours. Yeah. We can decide if we want invoices left in, whether MSDS is left in or not. Um, what I have is what pesticides are used in your department. How much is used each year? Locations. Uh, where and how are they applied? Copies of MSDS and invoices for each chemical. To what extent is your department you, uh, well, to what extent is your department making an effort to be less toxic? To use less toxic. To to use less toxic substances. I would at least Let's provide design. examples or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, so uh, Kate is suggesting less pesticide. Less pesticide yeah, and as opposed to toxic. Right, just oh. less pesticides without making a judgment. Yeah. Fewer. Although just the word is fewer. And what are, the pro what are these products and how are they used and where is part of that. Mm -hmm. And finally, what factors influence your decision on whether or not to use a pesticide? Um, I would just want to add that um, under the question about to what extent does your department um, please provide some relevant examples or something like that. Because it was just very elucidating for me to hear as an example of why I want this from Rich Parcelletti, some of the things that he has put in place, because it makes me realize in a very concrete way how he's been thinking about it and what he, what steps he's taken. So, so just to provide, please provide some examples or something. The examples of what steps you're taking. Yeah. Okay, just I'll put it under that. So. Yes. Um, but we did, we've already said that we were going to ask them what they were using. Pesticides indirectly. You know, in terms of um, to what extent is your department trying to use less pesticide? And then the follow up was what is being used and where, right? So, how mm -hmm. is that different from what you said, given you just want some examples? I mean, because we're asking them what? What are they, what are they using? Oh, so it's the question after to what extent? To what extent is that. your department using less pesticide? What are the products and how are they used and where? The proper brand has fewer pesticides, not less pesticides. Okay. Hmm. To what extent is Or less pesticide. <laughs> That's true. It's <laughs> pesticide. <laughs> you can say less. Um, I may not know Robert's <laughs> rules, but <laughs> you know grammar. <laughs> Um, so I'm a professional editor too, though. So <laughs> what are those products, and how are they used, and where? And then you wanted to. Add. What are those products? How are they used, and where? No, because it's not always products. Okay. Okay. So, like well, management techniques sometimes are oh, not see. Okay. product based. Oh, okay. So product so slash techniques. Yeah. yeah. There you go. So, do you still want to add? Give a few no, examples. That's fine. And um, and I think we're striking the MSDS and invoices. We're striking the whole thing. No, just just up. just the invoice, just that those two words from the previous question. 
Um, so our we question is, or the request is, provide copies of MSDS and invoices for oh. each chemical. So okay, what? so uh, so that's a whole that's a whole separate item. Okay, so do we still want to ask for the MSDS but not the invoices? I would defer to Kate on that because I don't. <laughs> that's not going to be easy for them to get together. I mean, I guess at this point we're trying not to aggravate anybody, right? Well, we could have, maybe, could we soften it by saying, if it's feasible on this short turnaround time, please provide a set of MSDS for the pesticide you use? Yeah, that would be. And or the seeds? Uh, might actually be easier for them to, I don't know. Uh, but it's a, it's an OSHA requirement. Mm -hmm. What is MSDS? Okay. If well, they then don't have. They have to keep it on file. Or not know where. Yeah. Okay. That's well, that's kind big. Yeah. So the question is, what our goal in having them is? That that would be my. Have you ever seen way one? of deciding to do it? I have. Yeah. Because it's you know it's a lot. Of, it's just going to prove to us that there are lots and lots of chemicals. But you know, are we a scientific company that needs to know exactly what? Everything is, is the question. Well, no, but we need a list of what's being used. Okay, that's our, that's our starting point. Well, we we might say, we might, one of our recommendations might be, I, I don't know, but it might be, gee, don't use any more of that. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, there's, there's something less toxic available um, that you could replace this with. I don't know. Yeah, that, no? That's beyond us. That's beyond mm -hmm. us. Okay, well, then strike yeah. that idea. Um, so, so my thought would be we could ask them questions, ask a question about um, how do you how do you keep track of your MSDS documents? You know, describe that system. You know, because that opens to them yeah. to the question of like, oh yeah, they're going to ask about that. Where do we keep those things? Right. <laughs> you know that, um, and I, I'm I'm hoping they already got this, it's well brought through and there's a file cabinet somewhere with all of this stuff for any of these departments, but that, um, that is a softer way of putting, just letting them know we're, we're interested in knowing how they're tracking, you know, how are they keeping important information here. So what would be a soft way to ask that question? Describe how you store the, you know, describe how you track MSDS documents and related to um, the pesticides that we use. Or do they have MSDS sheets for all the pesticides that they use? That's true. I mean, they should have them. So well, maybe that's not the question. Do you have them? I mean, it, it, if, it's an OSHA, if it's an OSHA requirement, then the, they're going to know that, and they're going to say, oh, well, I better say, yes, we're tracking those. <laughs> but. The question is, not are you do you have them because they have to have them, right? Are they accessible? Are, yeah, like who has access? How would that be? Would that be a softer way of saying it? Who has access to your MSDS documents? Describe the so. system. You know, how does this work for your department? Yeah. You know, somebody's out in a field applying something. They, you know, accidentally spray stuff in their face. How did they get the information as to what they should be doing to take care of themselves? You know, do they know who to call? You know, should they be near an eyewash station? I, I, I don't know, but. Well, that, and that is a different question than where, you know, how do you track your MSDS documents? But wouldn't those documents say? But the person out in the field who sprays their eyeball isn't going to care where the MSDS documents are stored. And what if I'm not going to go looking for it. They're I'm gonna, not sure it's the jurisdiction of this committee either. What their kind of administrative processes around their pesticide uses. I don't know what, how that furthers our goal of creating new policies about pesticide use reduction. And that's that's the thing that I always want to keep clear for it us. It is true. If anything, the MSDS sheets are valuable for the toxicity of the chemical. And that's something you can readily find on the internet a lot more readily than maybe going through their files and their right. machines. Because they have, they all have them on everything. Okay, so what we really want to find out is what are they using and how much? 
Right. In the, in, so now we're saying when the MSDS sheets aren't really going to give us that information, so why ask for it? If anything, the receipts would be more relevant. Right. And then the question is, is that something that's really onerous to ask them to produce? And that's something we could ask them in person, rather than them thinking, oh, I better bring all those invoices with me. We could just casually, when they're here, say, uh, how difficult would it be for you to provide us data from your invoices? But that wouldn't be a question in advance. Right, right. right. And then some people might, you know, maybe they say, oh, well, Central Services has all that information. You know, no problem. Uh, versus somebody might say, you know, oh my god, I don't know, that would be a huge headache. And then we would factor that into whether we were going to ask them for it. Right. Uh, you know, to me, that would be friend, a friendlier way. Like, how much trouble would it really be? Uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? That makes more sense. Mm. So I'm what? worried that we only have 15 minutes left. And I You're really right. I think we need to talk about how we're going to get the public involved because people have been contacting me. I'm sorry. To You're right. Spoke with You're me. right. And thank you for looking at the time. Um, well, I think we're almost done with these questions. I, I'm fine with drawing the MSDS question as well as the invoice question for now. You know. Okay. And I, I would agree, but I, I'm just wondering who we could call in the city that can tell us where they're on That's all. I think we could ask somebody from Central Services yeah. and, and be in the process that, of... Uh, that, that would be a... Uh, because to the eyewash comment, um, I just went through the MSDS sheets and they do, uh, everyone for every chemical has got to have a first aid uh, procedure. And so that's important for employees. Mm -hmm. are, you know, and how do you protect your employees? But we, you know, we're not OSHA, right? And we don't right. want to be perceived right. as being OSHA. So, but so strike it. So that could maybe that's a question we just forward to the mayor yep. and to Lynn in terms of what are, what's our overall policy around managing, you know, MSDS sheets and um, and training for using pesticides all over the city, you know, within any departments. Training, except that. See, I really don't agree with that. I have to say because <laughs> I think okay. that we're getting into city staff procedural issues. We're not talking policy anymore. And what we're doing at this committee is we're trying to shift policy and culture around pesticide use broadly. If it, it's, I think it's really inappropriate for a city council committee because of separation of powers to be asking about what the you know where things are stored processes that those kinds of processes are um, internal staff issues executive branch issues because the executive branch oversees city staff that's not what city council does I just want to know what pesticides are used yeah. right. how much is being used mm -hmm. what how Which much and how where much. what how much and where, where can we recommend reductions all right, I'm letting go of it. Thank okay. you for the pushback. So we'll, we'll remove <laughs> the MSDS request and the invoice request yes. off of the list. Does that sound? Yeah. yeah. And we can tease out anything we need to tease out when people are actually yeah. here. So we have that opportunity. This isn't the beyond end all this list of questions. Right. Right. And as as we proceed, we may come up with more more the interesting things. We may come out of these conversations. Maybe the <clears> adding <throat> questions. Um, is it okay with everybody if we move on? Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, we want to get. Do we know the process though of how this is gonna. Are you, you as chair or vice chair or whatever, just submitting this to the mayor with our list of places? Um, yes, I will submit this list of questions to the mayor's office along with the two dates that we're offering in the two times, and ask um, for each department to send someone who can address these questions within a 30 minute time frame. And the departments, and departments will be? The departments will be uh, Central Services, Planning and Sustainability, uh, um, slash Conservation, just so that it's clear that we want to talk about the pesticide use in the conservation areas. Um, the uh, Health Department. Yeah, Health Department. Central Services Plan. Oh, DPW. DPW. Mm -hmm. And then the school. And then the school system. Yeah. 
so possible. Yeah. So we're inviting five, and we're asking them each for half an hour. Should we say? Should we say thirty to forty-five <coughs> minutes per person? Well, per department. The per department might send two different people, mm -hmm. or three, I suppose. Minutes, uh, uh, including including back and forth. I just don't think we have time. We won't be able to accomplish everything if we don't do it within that framework. Okay. I mean, oh, although well, we have two meetings, so no, we have to worry about that. four half-hour slots, as it were. But then we have other things we have to talk about too in our meetings. Right. But that doesn't leave any open questions, does it? Well, I, I guess we're, we're not going to just ask them to talk for the half an hour, we're going to say we're going to be asking you these kinds of questions. Yeah. Right. I was asking them to talk for 10 minutes and then was there a rest for questions? We also have to be prepared if all four of them or five of them say, well, I want the 20 minutes. Yeah. I need to push it out. Well, if we present it to them as a matrix, they're going to have to fill it in. Who can do it? Right? Is there an application? Okay. So my th it, DPW, I think, is probably going to need more time because mm -hmm. you have highways, levees, forest parks, cemeteries. Um, yeah. So I, I think they and they have a lot of different things that they're overseeing. So I, I think whenever we schedule DPW, we probably want to allot a little more time. Okay. So let's say forty-five for DPW, and then. Similarly, if we have the schools, it seems to me that should be 45 minutes, right? Absolutely. The health department, 30, which should be sufficient, right? Because it's mostly about mosquitoes. Um, what was the other? Oh, central services and planning. Uh, central services. Yeah. I know that, yeah, I'm not entirely sure of all, all of what they do. <laughs> Well, we're going to find out, yeah. <laughs> or a little more anyway. You know, I think Jim made a good point in just when he named the DPW um, oversight pieces. I actually would like us to include that in our invitation, those so that they know that we want to know about what are what's your list? <laughs> yeah, would you Highway, mean? levees, forests, parks, cemeteries, um, and fight them. But that's that's it's probably water, green space. That's part of the Um So under park, this parks, I guess parks includes athletic fields and bike path. I would break it down and say um, definitely athletic fields. Or turf. You can call turf. it turf management too. And then under the. Um, Planning and sustainability, I'd like to have it broken down to conservation, agriculture. What else do they oversee, Jim, that is relevant? Um, yeah, so CONSCOM is going to be overseeing, you know, uh, different conservation areas that will involve forest and streams and watershed. Watershed would be DPW. <laughs> yeah, the watershed. Oh yeah, watershed. Well, I mean, we could just say we would like to discuss, you know, these areas, something like that, management of these areas. Okay. All right. So you know, we might. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, we might need more than 45 minutes um, for DPW. We have um, four departments, we could say yeah. 45 minutes for each. Well, um, we don't need 45 for health, the health department, yeah. I think. Um, central services, we don't really know. 
We're going to find out what the heck they know. <laughs> what they are. I suppose they would know how the city buildings are treating you, know, like the right. rodents and all that stuff. I, I assume, right? All right. So they also might be res they're responsible for procurement, I would imagine. Yeah. So they might have all sorts of information, more than we think. Um, okay. So uh, we re we really have to move on. Uh, to talk about how we, uh, are we okay with moving on? Yeah, I think we covered that okay. well. I, I feel confident that we have the right information. I'm also looking at the remaining items in the time and I'm wondering if these really have to be addressed today. <clears throat> well, I'd like to take a stab at it anyway. Because mm -hmm. sure. um, we do need to start letting people know that we want to hear from them. Do we want to have them come? Do we want to invite the public to our regular meetings? Do we want to hear from the public and, and from experts during our regular meetings, or do we want to have separate sessions for them? And to me, that's a, that's a major decision. And we might be able to make that. Well, I think the public kind of breaks down to different. I mean, every, every meeting is always a public meeting, anybody can come and offer public comment. There were a couple things that I had in mind with this agenda item. One is, do we want to do proactive outreach by having our chair um, at least sign a letter that would go to the Gazette that says, you know, we're meeting regularly. These are the dates we're meeting. You know, we welcome the public to come to our public comment period at the beginning of every meeting, just so that we're kind of doing our due diligence, letting people know there's this new committee, it's up and running, please come. So that's one of the things I wanted to ask about. And then the other one, the public refers to um, members, uh, not members, people in the community who submitted a, uh, applications to be a member of this board that were not chosen, this committee, that weren't chosen, um, but that do have significant expertise. And we would like to acknowledge that by inviting them to come and speak to us. Um, not just during public comment, but with a slot allotted to them. And a few of those members that we had talked about were Richard Jasky from the Conscom, um, Bernadette, Bernadette Giblin, who is an organic turf management person uh, known throughout the Northeast, um, Len Cohen, who's also a retired chemist who was recommended by the Broadbrook Coalition, Bob Zimmerman from the Broadbrook Coalition, really would like, he's written to me a couple of times, would like to come and address us. Um, and then just to brainstorm some of those other kinds of folks and also look at the applicants and see if there's somebody else that we would really like to acknowledge and have to speak to us. So that's what I had in mind for that agenda topic. So do we, I mean, I am totally in favor of all of the above, but the question is, um, do we want to invite them to come to meetings and give them a speaking slot, or do we want to invite them to come to a special session to give their testimony? Uh, Those are like to do a public choices. hearing, as it were, like a public. Exactly. Yes. Have a separate public hearing. Uh, rather than invite meeting. them to one of these meetings yeah. that we just okay. scheduled. I like the public hearing idea. Yeah. Um, you invite people to speak, and they come up, we can even limit the time, and we, I mean, I, I've seen it both ways. You're not supposed to engage, or is that just public comment? We can set the rules however we want, and yeah. back and forth, yeah. you know. So, the hearing is publicly announced that way. There's nothing on the agenda. Um, Adele would open it. We're opening the public hearing. Can't talk about anything in the other agenda. The city council doesn't technically call them hearings because they're <laughs> technically different. We would call it a public forum meeting and yeah, do it in the evening and people have more time to come and speak and you can do it with invited people and have public comment as well for anybody else, but you can also invite people for slots of time that you designate how long they are. So these are all issues that we'll address once we get the list of what we're dealing with, correct? Pretty much. It's probably not going to happen in September. Right. <laughs> because right. we have got to get so, many, so much work done. Right. Uh, 
these people we're talking about to come and give evidence or information would be information we'll be dealing with once we know which chemicals we're dealing with. I don't think necessarily I think it's just an opportunity for people to share their expertise broadly. Um, well, knowing some of these people and what their concerns are, I think that um, they just, they're just they just going to want to give their opinion about pesticides and mm -hmm. the alternatives. And yeah. um, Is that what, because I don't, I've heard of the people, but I don't know what they're going to bring to this committee. What well, are they going to bring? You mean in terms of uh, are we soliciting them to provide written material as well? As I, I don't know what we're. I know. I know. It's a, it, the the initiative to let the public speak and concern people is is wonderful, but are these people that have a particular expertise? In general, they are. Some of them are definitely. They can tell some, us. The ones that I mentioned who were applicants, yes. But then there are the people like the community gardens people who yeah. have had this battle going on around Roundup use, uh, want a public platform other than just public comment. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, okay. This is, I think we need more time to flesh out exactly yeah. who we would invite, but. Okay, so what we could do today is agree in principle. Uh, I would like to make a motion um, that we um, agree in principle that in October we're going to host some public forums um, in which we invite specific people to testify and submit written documents as well as any general members of the general public who would like to. I'll second that. Okay. So in, maybe in our, um, in our next meeting we can flesh that out a little more. All right, so in, I guess that was a motion, excuse me. A discussion? <laughs> um, so I just- I'll second. Oh, I thought I already said so it. Oh, you already did? <laughs> <laughs> but I just want to make sure in October we will host a public forum to invite specific people to present. In pre pre present in front of room, present their, ex their uh, relevant information, public information, <laughs> <laughs> in oral and written uh, form as they wish. Could we maybe at least set a date now? Sure, because that would help me make sure that I don't take up all of October and the evenings are very packed for me. Uh, yeah, so I guess we, we would in the motion would be an evening in October. How's that? But it is the full public, like the community garden people. Yes, that, we'd be that inviting would. specific people as well as the general public. Specific people and general public. Thank you. And that we would have to figure out ways to kind of publicize with posters and or a letter to the editor, et cetera. Have a look at the city calendar and see. Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, yeah, because we need a space. Good point. Oh, we could use the same or something. Yeah. <coughs> Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I don't like to talk about it, We definitely need this on our agenda for next month so that for September, mm -hmm. so that we can make sure we have all the pieces in place for October. There's no meeting scheduled in the city for October 14th. Is that a it's holiday? Columbus it's holiday. That's Columbus Day. That's right. <laughs> KPC, Charter Review. There's also nothing on the 9th. Is that, is that is one of the Jewish holidays? No. Well, it's the second night of the Yom Kippur, which we can't do for many people. I don't know. What, October 9th? It's the end of the holiday. It would end at sundown on Wednesday, but there are Jews that would feel kind of okay. I personally would not. Let's not do that then. Um, the 22nd and the 23rd of October. Those work for me so far. I cannot do that. Um, yeah, 23rd. Mm -hmm. October 23rd. Yeah. Okay, so then we just need to find a venue. Do we want to pick another one just in case? Sure. How about the 29th or the 30th? 
Where are the 30 people not the 31st? Uh, the 29th is good. It's, we're talking October, right? Yes. Um, I, I think the 29th is okay, uh, but um, that sure is late. Well, I, I'm, we, I think if we come up with this list right now, I think would could be managed in one meeting, but it may get longer is over the next month, and just having a, a backup. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking if we, if we want to have a draft of our report by early November, yeah, this right. Is, this is late. It is late. Yeah. Why the the previous week, October fifteenth or sixteenth, weren't good. Um, I, I was just looking for openings in the calendar. Charter review is on the 15th. I got TPC by competitive committee president, public shade tree. Yeah. Oh, what about this? What about down. Wednesday the 16th? What's happening with this? And the CPC has their meeting, and that's a place that we want maybe people to be able to come, but we don't know what time. They might have like an afternoon. They're at seven. Yeah. What is it? Community yeah. Preservation Committee, and they're the ones that give, uh, that uh -huh. use money for conservation area pesticide. For, uh, but, but we could invite them to come on the 23rd. Yeah, yeah. CPC people. We definitely have to brainstorm who we would like to specifically invite. So we could have. If we had, if we just went ahead and scheduled two sessions on the 16th and the 23rd, then we would specifically invite the CPC people for the 23rd. Mm -hmm. We definitely have to do the council chambers though because they're in here on the 16th. So we could probably get the hearing. Yeah, that's so are we going with the 16th and the 23rd? Or I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah. Okay. Can we have the 29th? We're canceling that? Yeah, it's yeah, too late. Okay. Um, and we don't have a time or a place, correct? Um, yeah. Who would we ask to reserve these rooms? Is that the Laura function? We can ask Laura to do it for us. And now Laura's out of town right now. She's on vacation. Yeah, we can just shoot her an email. And you think she'll... Well, if we do the hearing room, rooms, you ask um, the mayor's office, Annie or Court. Um, questions if we want to do it in the hearing room. What? To me, it's not the most inviting of places, but... And then for the 23rd, we would have We could actually do it here, couldn't we? On the 23rd? If there's nothing else here. Um, to the same say there's not to go on that right here. The 23rd, nothing's going on. So this space, we would, um, I think, could, don't, you think you can ask in the mayor's office to reserve them? So just ask Annie or Court directly for those two rooms for those dates. Yeah. And the only thing is what time. So, so how about 7 p.m.? 7, 7 to what? 8.30? No. Not two hours? 7 to 9? I would just, yeah, just for the extra. And if they end earlier, that's fine too. Reserve for 7 to 9. One thing that we've tried to do for other kinds of public forums is to do them at different times, though, so that the people who like work in the evening or can't come evenings can come during the day. So we could do like one during the day or earlier or something or not. Well, what if somebody couldn't make it to either of these forums? And we have we already have daytime meetings scheduled. You could just say, yeah, we can. When, we, okay. when we're publicizing this, we say, you know, someone 
unable to attend these meetings, but you know, blah blah blah, blah can contact the committee and blah 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 and okay. arrange something else. So okay. seven to nine local times. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll flush out the details. So for, to reserve the room, we don't have to give a whole lot of details. We just say it's for their for committee purposes, and then we'll flush out the details later. Whew. Okay, yeah, good work. Uh, we never, um, we had a motion, but we never voted on it, which was in October, to hold a public forum to invite specific people in general public to present relevant information in oral and written form as they wish in evening events, October 16th and 23rd, room and time the room to be determined. And the bell, um, the first, First thing, at least to do the second, and we need to vote. Thank you. <laughs> any any more discussion? Okay. No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. Phew. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. How are we closing? Oh, I I like to make a motion to close the meeting. I'll well, second that. Do we technically Oops. need to table the things we didn't get to? I can't remember what if that's the Roberts to? Rules thing. What did we get we to? We didn't review our assignments and, oh, well, report back, actually. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I was thinking it was a report back of what people have done, but yes. Okay. Okay, so for the next agenda, however, we could put on a report back of what, what's, what, what's been done. And um, so those of us who have assignments that are uh, not related to de questioning the departments should get busy on compiling information, you know, Kate, on um, um, effect of pesticides. Which yeah. pesticides? <laughs> the what, well, we can guess Daniel Litz first. The right? We could probably guess what some of the common ones are. Yeah. are. Um, and and you and I need to get the information about what um, other municipalities mm -hmm. are doing. But we don't know about what dentists are being used because they are what, yeah, it's true. That should probably so be we can each report that. back next time. We'll put that on the agenda. How's that? Alrighty. And our next meeting is... Oh, another potential invitee is the um, pollinators group. Uh, I believe our next meeting is September 9th at 10 a.m. Uh, yep. Oh, we have to get those rooms. We have to get, uh, you could just submit a list to Laura or maybe to the mayor's office to get this space reserved for all those meetings. Oh. And we have to remember just to get everything on the end. The agenda's in on time and all that stuff. Yes. So it's going to be fast and furious since we're meeting twice a month. It's a lot of work on your part, I don't um, so Well, it's, it, that's, that, that's pretty minor. But um, I, I'm just worried that because Laura's on vacation, what I do we do? I think about scheduling. That, they actually, the ultimate schedule is up in the mayor's office, so I think all the dates we could submit directly, because Laura does it as a favor to us. I don't think she actually reserves the council chambers. Okay. I believe it's either Annie or Court that has a master schedule for all the city, okay. the city spaces. Okay. So you could just submit it to them directly. Okay. Almost certain about that. Okay, so, so I'm going to ask those for those so dates. I'm in person. Lynn is the chief of staff of the mayor. Okay. And what's your last name? Simmons. Simmons. For real? <laughs> and a cousin? Yeah. 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 Okay, so now we're going to adjourn the meeting, right? Move to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor of adjournment? Aye. 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 That was great.